Welcome to On The Move. Mr. Middleton? Yes. So when you received your jury summons in the mail, how'd you feel? Um, I felt good. I felt good about it. And, and I know the judge has asked this question before, so I apologize if I'm asking it again. I just have to do it a little bit. <coughs> have you had prior jury experience? Uh, I've been called, but I've never served on a jury. Okay. And what about Miss Mitchell? When you opened your mailbox <coughs> and you saw a letter that said you had been selected for Clark County jury duty, what were you thinking? Rats. Rats. <laughs> 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 and why is that? fourth person in my work group of 15 that got one in the last two weeks and were swamped. Oh, well, I understand. And, I, and I'll ask at the end, it's usually the last question I ask, um, we'll ask whether or not anyone has a good reason, like the judge says, um, whether or not they want to be there. I'll also give people at the end an opportunity, they don't even have to have a good reason, uh, it's just something I may take into consideration when I make a decision. Um, is it Shoemaker? Mm -hmm. How did you feel when you got your summons in the mail? Yeah, I thought it was about time. About time. <laughs> yeah. So have you served before, or no. is this your first? Yeah, first time. Right. So what do you what do you expect from the process? Do you have any expectations or anything? Uh, I hope it's a learning experience. Uh, I'm excited to see the process. Excellent. Now, could I see a show of hands? And again, I'm just going to focus it to the individuals on this side of the room. Who here has had prior jury duty? And, and what I mean by that is you were actually selected to be part of the six. You made it through this process. Um, is there anybody that's actually been selected? All right. Mr. Fork? Yeah. Do you recall whether or not that was a criminal or a civil trial? Civil. Civil. Uh, do you recall whether or not a verdict was reached? There was a verdict reached. Uh, a long how, time ago. A long time ago. How long ago? Uh, probably over 20 years. Um, what was your take on the overall process working with individuals you may not be familiar with to decide? Uh, a decision or a legal issue in that case. It was interesting, educational. Educational. And was it Miss Morrow? Did you have your hand up? Yeah. Do you recall whether or not when you had the prior jury duty, whether or not it was civil or criminal? We did call it civil. Civil. Okay. And as well, do you recall whether or not a verdict was reached? Yeah. And did you think it was a fair resolution? I think so. Was there anything about that experience that? I guess changed the way you looked at the justice system, good, bad, not at all? Um, I just see that it's a lot harder than you think to make that decision when you're there okay. with the evidence that's presented. And what was your overall experience working with a group of uh, maybe individuals, again, you're not all that familiar with? Um, I thought it was a positive experience, but there are so many different personalities. It is difficult to come up with a decision. Um, and why do you think it's kind of, is it difficult just because of the personalities or the amount of people? Or? Um, because there's no way you can absolutely know um, based on what evidence you have beyond a shadow of a doubt, absolutely positively know it's very difficult. That makes sense. All right, so I'm going to move along and one of the things I like to do is um, sometimes some of these concepts can be slippery concepts to define. And I just feel sometimes for me anyways, I've learned that I'm able to communicate maybe a little bit better through some examples, or I guess I call them hypothetical. So there's usually one or two that I'll do. So when I get into those, I'll kind of let you know that I'm getting into an example and address that. So I'm getting close to my first example. Um, and it's just talking about the law in general. Now, many of us have laws we disagree with, possibly. Um, an example I often give is you know, the speed limit. Uh, I know sometimes there's individuals that feel maybe in a certain area or neighborhood maybe the speed limit should be lower or maybe on a certain highway it could be a little bit faster. Um, the judge is going to give you the law at the end of the trial and you'll be able to take that back with you when you go and do your jury deliberations. Um, those will be the jury instructions. Now, I'm going to give an example here and I'm not saying this is the way the law is or anything like that. This is a completely a hypothetical. And this is the first time I've ever actually used this hypothetical, so it's a little bit of an experiment. Um, Ms. Day, do you mind, you don't have to really say anything or anything, but do you mind being sure. in my example? Okay. And the rest of you, just like you are today, you're jurors. So you're going to be jurors at this hypothetical trial. So I'll give a little bit of a background about what's going on. 
So in this example, Miss Day recently had some good news. Uh, there was a baby in the family, and to celebrate, she had some people over over the weekend, and uh, they drank some bottles of Chardonnay. Um, now Miss Day is an upstanding citizen; she recycles. So on Monday, and she's sober now, she decides to drive to the recycle center. And on her way to the recycle center to drop off those empty bottles of Chardonnay, she gets pulled over for, we'll say, uh, speeding. And when the officer approaches her, he notices there's empty bottles of Chardonnay in there. Now, in this hypothetical, again, this, uh, I'm not saying it's just the way the law is. In this hypothetical, the law states you are guilty of the crime of uh, carrying an open alcohol container in your vehicle if there's any alcohol in that bottle. Now, as we all know, the bottle's empty. No one's going to drink any more out of it. But she forgot to rinse the bottle, so there's still a little bit of alcohol residue. No one's contesting her intent, and that was that her intent was to drive from point A to point B to the recycle center. However, the officer gave her a criminal citation. Now, is there anyone, just, and again, this is important for people to be honest, and just a show of hands, who thinks maybe that's a dumb crime in this hypothetical? To be honest, is there anyone? <laughs> now, let me ask you this. So it looked like I had several hands. Um, but let's say the judge at the end of that trial, and you're the jurors on that, the judge gives you the instruction that says, if this person did it, they're guilty regardless of the intent. Now, Mr. Lane, did you have your hand up? They thought maybe it was kind of a dumb law. No. Yeah. All right. Was it Mr. How do you say last name? Vegas. Vegas. If the judge gave you the law, would you still be able to follow it in that situation? Yes. yes. Would you be able to listen throughout the whole process? And yes. what about, can I see a show of hands? I know there are several individuals that thought that law was kind of stupid. Alright, pretty much everyone in the room. Is it bowl cut? Mm -hmm. uh, would you, how would you respond as a juror? Would you follow that jury instruction that says if the person did this, they're guilty despite her intent? And you can be honest. I think there has to be some common sense from the officer giving the ticket. Absolutely. But let's say it's in front of you. <laughs> I'm going to have a hard time with it. Okay. And again, that's why we ask these questions. Um, is it Miss Leitner? Kind of the same question I'm going to ask you. How would you feel about being a juror on a case like that with the law you may disagree with? Would you be able to follow the instruction? I would be able to follow the instructions, but I would have to hear the full, full testimony and evidence. Absolutely. And would you, during that process, do your best to be able to listen to all that evidence despite? And is it Chai? Yeah, Chai. Same question to you. How yeah. would you uh, respond in a situation like yeah, that? Yeah, I would follow the, the law. Follow it? Yeah. <laughs> All right. So that's, I'll move on a little bit, and it's always probably not the best segue to talk about officers, so I do apologize because you know, in that situation, maybe we would think that the officer would use, I guess, the word was a little bit of common sense. And again, I want to just be clear that's not the law, it was just part of this hypothetical, so I'm not commenting on anything outside of that. Um, so again, I'm going to ask this as a group. Can I just see a show of hands who here has had uh, an incident where they've been pulled over by an officer? And uh, speeding tickets, failure to stop at a stop sign, lane change, something along those lines. All right. So, Mr. Lane, I haven't had a chance to speak to you too much. Um, without really getting into why you were pulled over, I, how did you think the officer dealt with the situation? Most of the time, fine. Most of the time, fine? Have you ever had a situation where maybe it wasn't most of the time? Speeding ticket was, or anything like that. I haven't really had any speeding tickets, but getting pulled over, those have been fine. Getting arrested, that was extremely unprofessional by them, but okay. we worked that out. That's understandable. Um, and then, is it... Pezzy. 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 Did you have your hand up? Had you been pulled over before? No. No, never. First time. Wow. Um, who else? Was there anyone in the back? All right. Miss Day, uh, what was your experience with that? Was Being it, pulled over? Yeah, I mean, were you excited to be pulled over? Yeah. <laughs> Why not? <laughs> it was fine. Nothing that would uh, prevent you from being able to be impartial if you have an officer justified to that. 
Is there anyone that had, uh, I'll just get right to it, is there anyone that had maybe a negative experience, not necessarily that they want to share, but that they're willing to share to that? Ms. Bolcott? You know, I've been pulled over several times. I had a lead foot. Um, and I've had, you know, good days and, they've had bad days and good days. And, you know, when they're giving you the ticket, you just have to look at it like, wow, they're really having a bad day. I feel sorry for them. Okay. <laughs> Do you still have a left foot? Yes. <laughs> um, usually, I, I've never asked this one either, but I'm going to. Um, has anyone ever had a bad experience with an attorney? Either a prosecutor or a civil attorney or anything like that? Ms. Dent? And I don't need to get too much uh, with that, but uh, was it civil or criminal, do you recall? Family. Family? Okay, so I can imagine that. Um, anything about that that would change your ability to listen to two attorneys today talk a little bit? Not unless it was that specific attorney. Okay. All right, I got a few more. So I got about halfway through my time to get a little bit more. Um, I'll go into another example here. It's but before I do, I'm going to just ask, and again, I'll take any volunteers. Does anyone know whose burden it is today? And, and by that, I mean, um, is, it our, is it the city's burden to prove that Mr. Worley is guilty, or is it Mr. Worley's burden to prove that he's not guilty? It's the city's burden. The city's burden. Right. So Miss Day was kind enough to volunteer, so if she wants to answer this next question, I'll allow her, obviously. Um, you can pass as well, and then we'll ask the group. Do you know what that burden is, or what that's referred to as? What's the burden? What burden the city has. The burden of guilt? I mean, does anyone know what... Burden of proof? I guess I'll call it, does anyone ever heard of beyond a reasonable doubt? Yeah. What, and I'll just say, that is what the burden is we have today. Um, that's, again, kind of one of these, for me anyway, I think it's a slippery concept. So I'm going to give an example here, and it's not a trick question at the end. Usually when I ask the question, I usually get some looks, um, and then someone will give the answer, and then I'll yes. All right, so we're going to go back into this example, uh, but, or another example. It's a different one. So I know everyone went to bed last night um, and probably went to sleep. There's maybe some of you who was so excited to be here today that you just stayed up all night. But in this example, everyone went to bed, and everyone slept well. And you got up early because you were excited to be at jury duty in the courthouse today. All right. But when you went to make your coffee, you look out your window, and what do you see? I know, and I'm aware it's June, and you're almost July, but there's snow on the ground. So we're going to, again, this is December, we're going to say it's hypothetical. It's December. You look out your window. Your whole yard is covered in snow. The whole neighborhood is covered in a foot of snow. You look at your car, and you're like, darn, that's covered in snow. You look at the road, it's covered in snow. Your roof, the trees, bushes, everything is covered in snow. Now I'm going to ask this as a group, anyone can volunteer this answer. Does anyone know what happened over that night, last night? It snowed. It snowed, yeah. I always get the looks. But yeah, that is the answer. It did snow. Um, is there anyone here, actually, Ms. Leitner? Yes. Would you agree that it snowed? Yes. Would you say... You would, beyond a reasonable doubt it snowed? Yes. Is there anyone here that may have a reasonable doubt that it did not snow? Okay. So it looks like everyone agrees. Now, the same situation, I'm just going to change one thing. You get on the phone to call the courthouse to say, I, I might be a little bit late, i got to shovel my car out, it snowed last night. But then you hear a, a knock on the door, and it's me. And I'm actually wearing a tie, just like today, and I tell you, I got gotcha. you. I'm from Wisconsin, I really am, and I wanted to give you a white Christmas. Again, in this situation, it's, it's December. And I tell you, and I tell all of you this, it did not snow last night. I drove up to Mount Hood in my Chrysler Sebring, and I made 60 trips overnight, filled up my trunk in my car with snow, and scattered it all through your neighborhood. And again, I'm telling you this with a tie. And is there anyone here that feels that that's possible, would have a reasonable doubt that maybe no longer it snowed? Ms. Boca, I, I see you. Why is that? <laughs> you, you didn't break a sweat. <laughs> so is it, would you still have beyond a reasonable doubt that it snowed? I didn't mean to put you on the spot. <laughs> 
Um, I well, I think I need more proof. So can I just see the show of hands? Who here was a little bit nervous when they realized they might have to answer some questions in front of the group? All right, I see a show of hands. Mr. Ford? Yep. Why is that? Why does that put you on the spot? <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm just used to routine. Okay. Out of my routine. Ms. Shoemaker? Mm -hmm. What about you? Um, wanting to do my very best job. <laughs> Uh, do you enjoy public speaking? Um, I used to, okay. but I've been away from it for quite a while. So, so you used to. Is there anyone here that's afraid of public speaking? All right. Mr. As I call again, call someone out. Mr. Middleton. Yes. Uh, why don't you like to public speak? Uh, just makes me a little nervous, I guess. A little nervous? Um, Five minutes. Five minutes, right. Um, so I'll, I'll try to move on a little bit. So. We have Mr. Middleton, who is a little nervous about public speaking. We have Ms. Shoemaker, who used to enjoy public speaking, but now has been away from it for a while. Is there anyone here that just enjoys speaking to a crowd? Ms. Teacher. Teacher? All right. So, is there anyone that would disagree with the following statement I'm about to make? Uh, people react to things differently. Mm -hmm. All right. So, I'm going to go in talking about fear a little bit. And I'm trying to think, um, is there anyone here who is afraid of spiders? All right, let's try mice. Is there anyone here that's afraid of mice or rats? They're cute. Wow, okay, usually those are the two that I really get, so there's a polarizing thing. Um, snakes. Snakes, okay. Who here is afraid of snakes? Can I see a show of hands? All right, so I'm going to make a note and use that one next time. Snakes. You see a snake, what do you do? Stay away from it. Stay away from it. Anyone else do something differently? They see a snake, maybe they try to kill it, run away. Everyone? All right. Well, this isn't going exactly how I was hoping. So <laughs> usually, usually go, but all right, I'm going to make a statement and then just hopefully make a point. So I probably won't be much of one. Um, so we have some people that are afraid of snakes and some people that are apparently not afraid of snakes. The same statement <coughs> I made. Would everyone agree? Is there anyone here, I guess, that disagrees that? Um, people react to fear, I guess, have different fears. Or scary. All right. So the example wasn't very good in that time, I apologize, so I will keep those secrets. Um, okay. Um, last thing I'm going to talk about, I probably have about two to two and a half minutes, um, is this is a gun, uh, case about unlawful display of a weapon. So without getting into really the specifics of the case, um, I do want to just ask some people some general questions about who owns a gun. Um, can I just see again a show of hands as to who who either at one time owned a gun or currently owns a gun. Okay. Um, is there anyone here that hunts? Okay. Um, I'm going to ask this as a group. Feel free to volunteer, otherwise I'm, I'm not going to pick on someone on the call. Who here knows what the Second Amendment is about? Feel free to just, if someone wants to just be that kind of guy and say Right to bear your arms. Right to bear your arms. All right. Bear your arms. Is there anyone and again, I'm just going to ask these as a group now because we're getting down the time. Uh, what do you think of the Second Amendment? What are your thoughts on it? Strong feelings one way or the other? Not at all? Not really. I mean, yeah, we should be able to have them, but we should also be responsible in having it. So yeah. I don't have any zero, have zero tolerance for anybody that is careless with it. And so I'm going to make the following statement, and I'm just going to ask for a show of hands to see who agrees with this statement. And then I'll make another statement, and then I'll, I'll probably have a minute left. Um, I got to read it because I wrote it. So I'm going to make this statement and see who agrees with this. Every citizen over 18 who can pass a criminal background check should be required to own and carry a gun around the public. Is there anyone that agrees with that? Um, Ms. Morrill, why don't you agree with that? Um, why they should have to have a gun? Um, I'm not sure, but it just doesn't seem like to make a person have to do something if they don't want to, if it's um, not hurting anyone else. And so I'll ask the inverse of that and then uh, I'll be done. Who here, is there anyone that thinks that no civilian, no civilian now, um, should be able to own a gun? Okay, so it sounds like we're, it sounds like just from the answers, a lot in the middle here. 
And I said I was going to be done with one last question, and that is, does anyone have a, any reason at all that they feel they may not be the best person to sit on this? It can be a good reason. It can be maybe you are a cigarette smoker, you want to watch the United States World Cup, or you just you don't want to be here. Uh, <laughs> show of hands, and I'm just going to say all right. Um, just all right. Anyone else have, with that feeling? Okay. All right. Um, this is the last chance I get to uh, speak with you, so I just want to thank you. I'll be entertained right now, officer. Huh? Let me see your ID. No, thank you. What's that? No, thank you. No, thank you? No, thank you. Okay, why are you saying no, thank you? I, I know it's my Fourth Amendment right. I don't have to show you my identification. And one of these books that I want to discuss is this book right here. It's called Founding Brothers. It's written by Joseph J. Ellis, and I really found this book to be really informative. It helped me out a great deal in understanding uh, the founding of this. Really comfortable too. That's one thing I really like about this bag is the comfort level of it. Um, but anyway, so let me move on here, and we'll start showing the back here, show the features. Uh, first thing first here, we got the front of it. 